It is truly an honor to be here with you this evening at such an amazing event like TEDx. Matter of fact, the last advice that my mother gave me was, if you get nervous, they say just picture everyone naked. And my response to her was, whoever said that, their mother probably was not in that audience. <laughs> you know, I truly believe that I am the sum total of everyone that I've ever known and come in contact with, and I am truly blessed to have retained just a little bit of it. And so I believe that we are all searching for fulfillment. I believe in the power of relationships, and through relationships, that is the only way through which change and development and cultivation can happen. And I believe we must meaningfully find a way to contribute to the lives of others so that they can find their fulfillment, and in the process, we actually find our true fulfillment. My journey here to Indiana University actually began in a high school guidance counselor's office in which my guidance counselor called me in. She said, hey, there's this opportunity. It's called Junior Executive Institute. You spend a week in the summertime at Indiana University at the Kelly School of Business. I know you're interested in potentially majoring in business. This might be a really good opportunity for you. And logically, the only response I had was, will there be ladies? <laughs> All right? And she assured me there would be. I think this initiative is now called Meet Kelly, and actually, it's no longer a co-ed experience. The girls come one week, and then the, the gentlemen come another week, right? Uh, but it is interesting how that plays out in a young man's mind. But it was a great week. We had a really great opportunity to engage with faculty, our fellow students, gain some exposure not only to the university, but especially to the Kelly School of Business. And one of the really interesting things we did is we actually did a project like i -Corps. For those of you that understand or those of you who may be business majors, you know what i -Corps is, you would probably say, you had a taste of i -Corps and yet you still decided to enroll at any university, Indiana University, and major in business. And the answer is yes. Yes, I did. But at the end of, the great, end of that great week, I sat down with the dean of the Kelly School of Business and the director of diversity initiatives, whose name was uh, William Lewis. And they said, well, hey, what would it take, to you, take for you to potentially come here to Indiana University? And my response was, this has been a great week, but I'm headed to the East Coast, right? That is, that's my path. I had one sibling that was already on the East Coast, and I spent a lot of time out there, and they said, but what would it take? And I said, well, you know, it would probably take uh, me becoming a direct admit right out of high school. And I said, it would probably also take, it would take some money, right? Because college costs money, and I understood that. I was no fool. But I probably should have asked for a little bit more, right? <laughs> but long story short, that's exactly how it worked out, and I decided to enroll at Indiana University. Interestingly enough, I firmly believe that mentoring is an extremely important part of that story. And so once I got to Indiana University, Dr. William Lewis took me under his wing. Right? He didn't just give me a scholarship, but he would say, hey, meet me in my office. Let's take a walk. Hey, let's go to dinner. Hey, let's go to lunch. And he would ask me questions about campus. He would ask me, about how things were going academically. We would talk about dating, right? We would talk about the social life. And at the time, I don't know if he knew what he was doing, but he was really mentoring, right? We would have casual conversations walking around campus, him giving me advice, really engaging me. And the way that he impacted my life, I hope that in some way he was able to take something from it. And so oftentimes I encourage others to mentor someone else. And usually the standard response is, well, what is mentoring, right? I don't have it all together myself. Can I really engage and contribute to somebody else's life? What do I have to offer? Because it can be a daunting task. But I contend that usually we're making that conversation a lot, a lot more complicated than it otherwise needs to be. Because mentoring is not complicated. It is really about two things. It's about making someone feel your love, and your selfless concern for their development and their success. Think about someone in your life. Think about maybe the first time in your life in which you felt, you know what, this person cares selflessly about my growth, my success, and my development. They're not asking for anything. This isn't a cold call where somebody says, hey, I'd like to talk to you. Right? This is an opportunity where someone just says, listen, I just want to figure out what I can do to help. For many of us, that may be a teacher. Right? For someone else, it may be a family friend, or it may have just been a stranger. 
right? But this is what leads to better outcomes to, in others and also better outcomes in us. This in the process not only makes their life, but it also makes ours in the process. Let me tell a story. Most of us have been part of a science fair or a science project at some point in time. And so I'm going to tell you a story about a, a young woman at the, she was about 13, 14 years old. She set out to be part of a science fair. She decided to do her project on water purification. Had a series of water bottles set up. Obviously the water bottles went from dirty water and showed the matriculation to clean water and talked about how important water for purification is in our process and to our society. Now, this is, took place in like the early to mid 90s. And so this wasn't a time when which you could research on the in internet with vast amounts of endless information. This was at a point in time in which you wanted to know all of knowledge that existed in man. You had an assembly of about 20 some odd books that a man in a suit drug around after his full time job door to door hoping that someone would buy a set of these books called encyclopedias, right? A little different than we had it today. And so she consulted the encyclopedia with the help of her mother to figure out what she could say about water purification. But she had a, a best friend who was also taking part of the science fair. And now her project was actually on physics. It was on physics. And you say, may say, huh, physics for a 13 or 14 year old is not something that you've been introduced to but it used an assembly of wax paper and pulleys set up to show friction in the energy that can be produced. All right, you may say, well, how would a 13 or 14 year old know that? She had a father who was, engineer, who was an engineer and she went on to actually place in the science fair. To Cindy's dismay, she believed that she wasn't competing against a classmate, she was actually competing against an engineer. This would be a theme that she would actually go on to experience on through her education. So she went on to enroll at Princeton University. While at Princeton University, she came to find out that many of her classmates had their entrance essays written for them. While at Columbia University, working on her master's thesis, she came to find out that many of her classmates had their topics and some research given to them. It wasn't until this time at Columbia University, she, was, began, she began to be tutored by a professor of hers in the field of public health. From that relationship, she began to look more closely at the School of Public Health. She decided to enroll at Johns Hopkins for her PhD. Knowing that her success was tied to those who potentially could help her and otherwise wanted nothing in return, she began to learn the lesson of outcomes being Outcomes that are more invested in by others can obviously be tied to our success. Today, she's Dr. Cynthia Jones. Right? She's an epidemiology. Though she swore off science fairs forever, right? she actually travels the world being part of, we call sophisticated science fairs, we call them conferences. right? <laughs> right? But what she does is she edu educates others on specific disease states and their various effects on varied populations. Right, she makes posters and presentations, but it doesn't stop there. She actually engages with her colleagues, leads a team of fellow epidemiologists, helping them cultivate their work, deciding who's ready to also be part of these other science fairs, these conferences. And now today, she understands that now in business, she has a group of people that are vested in the interest of her success. Because we know in business where there is money, then we know we want to make sure that those outcomes are conducive for everyone. And she's working with disease states in which people are adversely affected by. So we understand mentorship and just how important mentorship is. We know that those who are mentored are much more likely to enroll in college, even volunteer regularly, right? And they're more interested and actually becoming a mentor themselves. Basically, more likely and more interested to become the things that you have been exposed to. But I would also like to think that if we take it a step further, we can begin to see how this correlates. And so for those students that are mentored, higher educational attainment in terms of high school graduation, college enrollment, 
We also understand that self-esteem and confidence goes up and their relationships get better across the board with everyone. But I contend that this is not only the results for those that are being mentored, but it gets very interesting when you also look at those who are doing the mentor. And so we see that their self-esteem goes up, their sense of accomplishment, right? Their leadership skills, their patience, their relationships also increase just the same way that those who are being mentored do as well. And so in my time with some of my work with others, what I've tried to do is also bring some other people along in this process of mentoring. One Saturday morning, we brought in Mayor Joe Hogsett. He's the mayor of Indianapolis, just up the road. Students asked him really tough and hard-hitting questions. They asked him about foreign policy, this group of young men. It was about a group of 150 young men talking about foreign policy, asking about his future political aspirations, questions about their community. But the really interesting thing is that at the end of it, the mayor said, you know what, this has caused me to look at my community a little differently. It causes me to look and identify with the young men that I serve a little deeper in ways that I hadn't before. Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department has come in several weekends. And usually when they come in, we've really worked to try to foster the gap that exists between our communities and our law enforcement departments. In the process, students will walk through traffic stops. And I think the other really interesting thing is as they walk through traffic stops and allowed to ask free questions, and sometimes very difficult questions that they're asking these police officers about how they feel about their safety and when they're approached by police officers. In the process, students came away and said, you know what? I begin to see these officers as actual just people in the community because I understand that they have families. And in turn, those officers came back and said, you know what, I began to see myself in these young men. Extremely significant. And so engaging others in the process is so important. A good friend of mine began doing, we began doing workshops on relationships. Uh, the last one we did, it was a large workshop. It was about 220 high school students. Really interesting thing, usually at the end of a workshop, I try to make sure uh, that I engage students and give them an opportunity to try to reward them for their development and reward them for being participants. And so I would give out gift cards, about $5 on a gift card. You would be surprised what people do for $5 to Starbucks, right? And $5 to Starbucks doesn't really buy you anything, right? It doesn't actually buy you a drink. It's more like a coupon, right? I had one left over and I couldn't decide who to give it to. I'd give them two to the ladies and two to the young men. And so I decided, you know what? I gave a fifth to a young man and I said, hey, I want you to pick a young lady and decide who you think should get the gift card. And so as he stands up and he's kind of combing through the crowd, all the young ladies are standing up, they're shouting, pick me, pick me, right? And so he gives it to one young lady who happened to be kind of quiet. And so afterward, I brought the two together and I asked him, I said, hey, why did you happen to give it to her? And he said, well, she seemed kind, she seemed respectful, she wasn't loud, she wasn't jumping up out of her chair. And I thought she had some great answers and really engaged. He said, I guess it's kind of the way that I would choose to date somebody. It was a very impactful moment. It, it, it reminded me that I don't necessarily have to be the one who's doing the cultivation. I can engage others in that process. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. gave uh, one of my favorite speeches. It was about three dimensions of a complete life. He talks about the length of life, right, which is man's inward concern for himself. He talks about the breadth of life, which is man's outward concern and reach toward the welfare of others. And then he talks about the height of life, which is man's upward reach toward God. And in the same speech, he contends that man's most persistent and urgent question is what are you doing for others? Oftentimes we ask others, what's your major? What do you do for a living? All right? What did you study? We ask questions about how to, how, what they're doing to make a living. All right, but I would contend that what we should be doing is asking them, what do they do for others? Because in that, that tells us how they are making a life. And so I say to you that by selflessly sowing seeds of energy, love, attention, and belief into others, we will not only help others find their fulfillment and help them make their life, but in the process, we will find our fulfillment and we will make a life.
Thank you.